Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 24. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. My apologies for not making any videos for the last five days. Just been getting over uh, being sick, so. Uh, we'll slowly ramp back up and then hopefully we'll get back to a video <coughs> every single day. So again, as you guys know, we do this series on the first of every month. But for the astute observer, you may notice that it's actually June 3rd. But we're just going to pretend like it's not, right? We're just going to pretend like it's June 1st and talk about it as if it were June 1st. Unfortunately for us, the market hasn't really changed since June 1st, okay? So, as of, as of June 1st. 2022. The total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a very modest 1.28 trillion, with the fair value logarithmic regression trend line coming in at a somewhat humble 1.65 trillion. Now, what do you notice? This represents an undervaluation of approximately 26%. Okay? Now, a lot of people spent 2020, late 2020, <laughs> and early 2021, talking about how they wish they had been around during the last bear market. Well, if you're still here, congratulations. You've made it into the, you know, I mean, you've been here for at least the first, um, at least for the first half of the bear market, right? So, or, I mean, obviously that remains to be seen how long it'll take exactly, but you've been here for a while. And if you've made it this far, I have to believe, I choose to believe that many of you will make it through to the next bull market. But you have to be patient and you need to recognize these undervaluation territory phases. They can last a while, right? I mean, it can last for, <coughs> for more than just a few months. So we're undervalued by 26%. What does that mean? Well, historically, what happens when you go below the undervaluation or when you go below the fair value is you sort of go down maybe about halfway between the red fair value and the green lower band. And then you basically just go sideways until you hit the green band, okay? So like down and then sideways into it, down and then sort of sideways into it. I mean, I forgive the 2019 rally. So, you know, I mean, if if, if we're going to come down into, into the halfway point, you could argue that we already made it there. Um, the, the law of ultimately, you know, at least historically, we normally see more than one lower low. So we've seen one lower, <coughs> we've seen one lower low so far in this bear market. In the 2018 and <coughs> 2014 bear markets, we saw two lower lows. If that's the case, then that means 25K is not the bottom. Um, but anyways, you know, the idea is that there's a lot of angst right now in the market, or at least there used to be. <laughs> it's getting a little bit better now. I, I think people are becoming a bit more apathetic, uh, which is a good thing, right? It's a good thing. And, you know, you need to recognize that you have plenty of time, right? Like Bitcoin's not going anywhere right now. I, it, okay, it, could, could it go to 35K? Could it go to 40K? Sure. Could it go to 25K? Sure. Could it go to 20K? Sure, right? But in terms of gearing up for a future bull run, we have time, okay? And you need to recognize that we have time, right? You have plenty of time to, you know, to figure out your strategy. You know, I've told you guys what, what's, what, what I see happening. I said Bitcoin dominance is going higher. All Bitcoin pairs are bleeding. And, um, you know, enjoy your summer, right? <laughs> it's pretty, pretty simplistic at this point. But... Regardless, you know, if you look at, at prior at, at prior market cycles, you know, normally we, we see ourselves go to the top of this regression band, and we didn't see that this time, right? We saw uh, a couple bunny hills, <laughs> and, you know, obviously the second one, you could, uh, you could argue, has been somewhat tempered by, by the Fed and, and, and then becoming very hawkish and really soaring inflation, right? Um, we're trying to do a better job of incorporating macro stuff onto the channel. I think it, I think it will help. So now we are in the undervaluation territory, right? So um, this means that we're, you know, based on where we should be, we're actually undervalued, right? Now, does that mean you should throw, you know, should YOLO everything in? Does that mean you should go back to the family farm now? Well, not necessarily. I mean, you know, we could still drop. I mean, we, you know, the asset class <laughs> as a whole could drop another 50% potentially. Um, doesn't mean it has to, but it certainly could if history is any indication. So I, I, I would say, you know, just relax. We got time. Um, you know, you have time to figure out what assets you really want. 
I've said many times, altcoins will remain high risk. And, and a lot of people assume that that means that they always remain high risk against the US dollar, <coughs> which they do. But really, the main thing I, I want to highlight is they're high risk against Bitcoin. And I've said that before. It doesn't really matter what Bitcoin does. Up, down, sideways. Uh, it can even go back in time. Uh, alts are likely bleeding against Bitcoin for months to come, right? So Bitcoin gives you the safety of having um, of, of minimizing your risk, but it also it, it also allows you to have some exposure to the asset class. Okay. <coughs> if you take the percent difference between the total market cap, and by the way, this is the total market cap of the entire asset class, not just Bitcoin. If you take the <coughs> percent difference <coughs> between the total market cap and the fair value, you get something that looks like this. Major peaks, undervaluation territory, right? What do you notice? This, when you're down here, it sucks every single time. I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't. But it's also probably the most fun you'll have in crypto, honestly, because you don't have to, you know, you're not constantly worried about, like, what altcoin's going to moon tomorrow. Um, it's more so just allowing the asset class to heal for the Bitcoin dominance to go higher and then to you know to allocate into positions accordingly in, in in preparation for a future bull run and maybe the next bull run will take us back up to the trend line you know maybe this will be some huge w or something that forms i don't i don't know um but you know we certainly are undervalued right now and we haven't been this undervalued really um <laughs> since like late 2020 i believe okay now going back <coughs> excuse me i'm still getting over this um going back to this chart as I said before, you know, we're, we're undervalued by 26%. And, you know, <coughs> I've mentioned many times that, you know, we whatever comes next will, in fact, be a new cycle. Okay, we have to we have to accept that. We have to understand that. Even if 25k is the bottom, it's a new cycle, right? Like, it just is like, it is what it is. I don't control what it is, but it just is what it is. Uh, and, and you, you know, you don't go through a risk off time like we're going through and then and then whatever comes next, say, it's part of the same cycle. It's just not right. Like, it's just not it's, it'll be a new cycle. And so, you know, that certainly calls into question exactly will, when will the asset class <coughs> hit 10 trillion. You can see that the fair value isn't going to hit 10 trillion. I mean, it's not even on this chart, but it looks like it would probably cross sometime in 2025. Um, but, you know, we, we certainly could spend, uh, you know, some time in this range. Currently, the asset class, as I said, is just below 1.3 trillion. The lower bound green regression ban at, at 1 trillion, would, it would take until mid-2023. So, I mean, if we if we sort of cr crabbed around here for a while, then went sideways into it, and then saw some type of move into a future bull market, you know, you could imagine that, um, you know, it, it would it could take longer, right, than, than, <coughs> um, than it happening this year, right? Like, it's, it's not happening this year, certainly, right? The asset class is certainly not going to 10 trillion this year. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Um, so, well, nothing's really for sure, right? Except death and taxes. But um, I, I do think the, you know, the, <coughs> the, the $10 trillion milestone is, is not happening this year. Um, <coughs> and that realistically, we need to get back into a risk on environment and, and, and another Bitcoin having before you're likely going to see uh, 10 trillion, right? It just is what it is. Okay. Um, so, uh, I would I would say that if you're if you're still watching you know crypto YouTube now if you've made it halfway through 2022 I would say try to try to stick with this thing I mean at least at least another half year uh, just to try to get through the bear market I don't know exactly how long it'll last but uh, if history is an indication we we could still have a few more months even if we do have some some relief rallies um, and then we'll gear up for the next bull run right uh, I mean. That's where we are, right? So, you know, as I've said before, right, I, I've made this clear. Like, I, I do think we are headed at 10 trillion, right? I do. I, I think it'll take another, it, it, I mean, it's certainly going to take another mania phase to get there. You know, we're, we don't, we're, we're likely not just going to slowly go up to, to 10 trillion. <coughs> and, you know, rather than operate too deterministically about saying when exactly that's going to happen, whenever it does happen, I, I, I would imagine that the, the, the next mania phase, the next time the Bitcoin risk level goes back to the 0.9 to 1 risk span, the next time the one-year ROI is hitting the macro downtrend channel, the next time all that stuff is you know, coinciding, I, I do think will be around the $10 trillion milestone for the entire asset class, uh, plus or minus a few trillion, right? And as you go to sleep at night, you cannot help but wonder, 
what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. <coughs> Check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium. We have a sale going on right now, intothecryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.